King Charles' coronation this spring will draw worldwide attention. However, the British royal family continues to be plagued by a dark legacy hidden behind the glitz and glamour. The monarchy has long been charged with looting riches and crown jewels from former British colonies like Africa. What impact did this theft of money have on the British Empire? In this video, we will take a look at the intriguing history of the British royal family and the coronation of King Charles III. The coronation of King Charles will occur on Saturday, May 6, 2023. Plans for the coronation of Charles III and his queen consort Camilla have been underway for a long time under the codename Operation Golden Orb. A huge number of Americans will be watching this occasion as they did the grandest royal weddings in the United Kingdom and Queen Elizabeth's burial. So where do these customs originate from? And how are they being changed to accommodate a new monarch, the first to be crowned in Britain in 70 years? Keep watching till the end to be amazed. Major royal events have been broadcast on television ever since Queen Elizabeth's husband, Prince Philip, famously promoted it during their coronation. The event will probably be televised on several cable news and broadcast networks in the United States in addition to the BBC in England. Although no declarations have been made in a formal manner, most likely those networks will also broadcast it live for you to view online. Just remember that you'll need to wake up very early to watch the ceremony because of the time difference. The coronation will be much shorter than the three-hour royal marathon Queen Elizabeth II endured. There's no doubt that people's attention spans have decreased over time. Shorter will be preferable. The ceremony should run no more than an hour or two. However, the festivities will go on until Monday, May 8. The coronation is a religious ritual in addition to a political one. King Charles is actually being anointed as God's preferred monarch. Even if it may appear strange to us in the 21st century, having a king is nevertheless justified by that. Charles' position as the head of the Church of England and his authority as the realm's symbolic monarch will both be confirmed during the event. The somber day will be marked by a joyous public holiday, a pop performance, a light display at Windsor Castle, extended happy hour hours at bars, and neighborhood luncheons. Since the Middle Ages, the ceremony itself has remained largely unchanged. The Liber Regalis is a medieval Latin text that serves as a general guide for a coronation, which is first and foremost a religious ritual. King Charles will be anointed with holy oil by the Archbishop of Canterbury, the leader of the Church of England, and will take a solemn oath to maintain both the Christian religion and the laws of England. Charles will receive the orb, coronation ring, and scepter which represent his divinely anointed position as monarch of the United Kingdom. After that, he will be crowned, though not exactly in the same fashion as the previous king. In addition to being crowned as King of South Africa, Canada, Australia, and all of the Empire's territories, the late Queen Elizabeth's father, King George VI, was also made Emperor of India. Charles will rule over far less territory. He may be the final British head of state in other nations, such as Australia, where support for a president is rising. In contrast to past coronations, this one will be new. Although King Charles III is the head of the Church of England, he continues to fight to be seen as a royal for all religions. This time around, there will be additional religious representations besides the Church of England. As a result, leaders of the Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, Sikh, and Roman Catholic religions should be expected to take some sort of part. King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla will travel through downtown London to Westminster Abbey from Buckingham Palace. This is called the King's Procession. By the way, in addition to hosting royal weddings and funerals, Westminster Abbey also served as the location for the union of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, Prince William and Kate Middleton, and royal coronations. In 1066, William the Conqueror, who conquered England from Normandy, was crowned king in Westminster Abbey for the first time. The 40th monarch to be crowned at the Abbey will be Charles. While the majority of the Western world is still mourning the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, the UK's longest reigning monarch, some of her former colonies have expressed concern over the monarchy's dark history and her rule. The Great Star of Africa, which measures an enormous 530.2 carats, is one of the rarest and most valuable gemstones in the collection called the Crown Jewels. It was discovered in South Africa in 1905 and is named after the mine's chairman, Sir Thomas Cullinan. The original diamond had a natural weight of around 3,106 carats and was roughly the size of a human heart. There is an ongoing discussion about whether the Star of Africa, which is at the center of the Queen's regal scepter, should be considered a gift or a stolen diamond. 
The Koh Inur is the focal point of controversy in South Asia. South Asians all around the world began requesting the contentious diamond's return as soon as word of the Queen's death spread. An ownership dispute between the British royal family and several of its former colonies has been centered around the 105.6 carat Koh Inur, which is said to be the priciest diamond in the world. The disagreement over the diamond represents a bigger protest against the British for downplaying the harshness of their 200-year reign and is considered to be worth $400 million by some and priceless by others. The diamond has a controversial history. As a requirement of the Treaty of Lahore, the East India Company took the jewel from the 10-year-old Maharaja Dilip Singh in 1849. In the Punjab, which is located across what is now northern India and eastern Pakistan, the Anglo-Sikh wars came to an end as a result. The contract stated that Queen Victoria would be given possession of the gem. The Koh Inur has been a favorite of British queens for years since it is said to bring good luck to ladies but bad luck to males. It was a part of Queen Mother Elizabeth's crown. It is on display at the Tower of London and is currently regarded as royal property. Camilla, the wife of King Charles, will supposedly inherit the crown with the Koh Inur. Western countries took part in the theft of thousands of works of African art during times of conflict and colonization. Numerous priceless African artifacts were transported to London during Britain's anti-slavery missions in order to be sold to European collectors and museums. At the time, academics questioned the ability of primitive Africans to produce such masterpieces. Leo Frobenius, a German archaeologist who was charged with stealing a Yoruba Ife skull in 1910, claimed they were Greek and not African in origin. Authorities in Ghana have also made an effort to recover gold artifacts that British soldiers had stolen from the Asante Empire, now known as Ashanti. British colonial power increased its holdings in West Africa in 1872 by acquiring the Dutch Gold Coast. After the slave trade was abolished, the Dutch found it to be less profitable, but the Asante, who British MP Charles Adderley referred to as the most warlike of the African tribes, refused to submit to British rule, leading to the mounting of a punitive expedition in February 1874 through the aid of 2,500 British soldiers. Explosives were used to blow up the royal palace in Kumasi, and the entire city was pillaged and set ablaze. Less than three months after Kumasi's devastation, items taken by British soldiers from the royal palace were auctioned off at Garrod, the crown jewelers. Today, Garrod is still active in London's West End. Leaders of the Asante tribe were compelled to sign a contract giving up their claim to their territory, banning the practice of human sacrifice and footing 50,000 of Britain's war costs. Around 514 Asante royal regalia ended up in the British Museum, 19 at the Victoria and Albert or VNA, and 14 at the Wallace Collection. The British royal family, Glasgow Museums, and Dallas Museum of Art, and other organizations also house Asante riches. Almost 13 royal antiques were purchased by the VNA at the Garrod auction, and further purchases were made from troops who took part in the looting. Only three of its collection's items are on public display, and the remaining 16 are kept in storage. The Ngaji, a holy drum of the Pakomo people of Kenya's Tana River Basin, was taken by British colonial agents in 1902. The drum has spent more than a century at the British Museum storage area without ever being seen by the general public. Many contentious collections, as Maina notes, have been in storage for decades or even centuries after being transported to Western museums. And that concludes our journey of the coronation of King Charles III and the troubled history of the British royal family. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. And if you found this content helpful, give the video a like.